I'm Charlie, this is Overtime Arcade, and today's video does not feature an arcade machine restoration project. Yeah, so this video is a bit of a meta project designed to improve my test bed capabilities uh, out in my garage workshop. So if you saw my latest video, uh, I was working on a Golden T99 that had a bad monitor, and I was trying to test it out using my test monitor, but my test monitor was having some problems. Uh, I was missing colors, I was having intermittent uh, voltage issues with the voltage regulator, and uh, in this video, I want to make good on that and, and fix that test monitor so that I can use it going forward in future projects. So there's a couple things we're going to do, to do with this 13-inch K7000 Wells Gardner CRT monitor. Uh, a couple of basic steps that you'll probably need to be familiar with if you're going to work on arcade monitors yourself. So we're going to, first of all, build a little temporary test bed uh, isolation transformer power supply so that we can... Uh, power up these monitors and work on them separate from a cabinet. Uh, we're also going to install a cap kit on the chassis. Uh, we're going to reflow any uh, solder connections that seem a little dodgy. I'm going to hook the tube up to a rejuvenator uh, to see if the, if the tube's in good shape or if we need to address anything there. Then we're going to put the whole thing back together and readjust uh, the colors. And hopefully at the end of this process, I'll have a great working test monitor again uh, to use in all kinds of future projects. So if that sounds like fun, why don't we head out to the garage and get started? Let's go! Overtime! All right, guys, we're out in the garage and here's what we've got. This is the little 13 inch K7000 monitor that I've been using for testing uh, recently. Uh, if you remember, this originally came from that little rinky dink red mini cabinet that I featured in my April Fool's Day video. And this, this monitor kind of works. Uh, I've had a couple of different things. It's been a bit flaky. I've had some intermittent HV shutdown issues that I think are caused, being caused by cold solder joints. And the colors are a bit screwed up. So uh, in this video, I want to get this monitor back into tip-top shape so that I can continue using it to test uh, different, different games, different PCBs. Uh, and one of the first things that I want to do is I've been meaning to put together a little test bench monitor power supply thing. And it is kind of you know pretty easy to power up a, a monitor, but you, there are some important uh, parts that you need to, to do it. And what people often do is they just hook it up to uh, a cabinet, right? One of the biggest things that you need is a obviously a power source. You know, most monitors, most uh, uh, Western monitors run on 120 volts, you know, sort of, you know, the voltage that would come out of a wall. You know, Japanese monitors run on uh, 100 volts, so they need a bit of a step-down uh, uh, transformer. But what's very important is almost all monitors require an isolation transformer, which uh, isolates uh, the ground from the, the live voltage. I don't, I, I don't really understand it, but it's very, very important. And you can, you can damage a monitor really, really bad if you don't use an isolation transformer. And the reason that people often just use you know, cabinets to power monitors is you, know, you have an ISO, you have an isolation transformer in that cabinet typically. But if you're working on lots of monitors, like I do, you know, you've got a, a workbench and you're doing, you know, cap kits and re uh, replacing flybacks and, and just generally, you know, repairing monitors. Uh, it's, you know, it would be convenient to have sort of a separate uh, power supply to power up those monitors on the bench and not have to drag over a, uh, an entire cabinet every time you want to work on a monitor. So, so that's what I'm, I'm doing here. And I've kind of, you know, hacked together a prototype of what I want, right? So it's, it's very, very simple. Uh, I base this largely on the uh, basic AC wiring diagram from uh, uh, Bob Roberts. Uh, if that name rings a bell, you've uh, been in this hobby for a while. Um, and I'll link to that in the, uh, the video description. But basically, in a nutshell, what we've got going uh, on is, you know, power comes in, you know, from the wall. This is actually like a computer, you know, power cord. And it goes into this, uh, this connector here that I, eventually I will, you know, attach to a, uh, an enclosure. Um, but this has a built-in line filter. So this is a 10 amp uh, line filter. Uh, so the power comes in uh, and it has three uh, connectors. It has uh, the live wire, uh, the neutral wire for AC, uh, and it has a, a, a ground plug, uh, the, the uh, green there. So basically the live uh, voltage comes in 
it goes to a fuse. I've got a three amp uh, fuse here and a fuse holder, and then it goes to a, uh, a toggle switch, uh, and that runs uh, to one of the input lugs uh, on the isolation transformer, and then the neutral line goes directly to the, uh, the other input lug on the isolation transformer. And this is an ISO that I got from ArcadePartsAndRepair.com, and as you can see on the label, uh, the input is 120 volts uh, AC on the red wires, and the output is also 120 volts uh, uh, AC uh, that's been isolated from uh, the, uh, the input uh, uh, ground, I believe is, is how that works. And then that, uh, the output uh, uh, lugs run to a couple of wires that I've got sort of, uh, again, uh, temporarily connected to the input uh, power uh, lines, input power connector on the monitor. And I've also got a ground wire going from the, uh, the chassis, uh, or the, the frame, not the chassis, the frame uh, of the monitor. And this is actually, you know, one of the, the, uh, the points intended for ground that comes over here, goes to, uh, the isolation transformer, and I've got temporarily just a little bolt right here sort of holding it all together. And then another alligator clip uh, comes back to the uh, grounding bit. And I got a little bug here, despite the citronella candle. <laughs> uh, the, I got the garage doors open because it's beautiful uh, to the other ground here. And so it's all grounded. Um, I mean, I'm not really thrilled with this switch, honestly. I think I'm going to use a different one uh, just because this is supposed to light up, but it only lights up if I've got both the the live and the neutral uh, going through the switch, which is unnecessary. And it doesn't have like a grounding uh, point. So I've got another one uh, on order, but yeah, this allows me to have a uh, isolation transformer that I can plug into the wall and provide that isolated voltage uh, to the monitor. And I've got a fuse here for safety and I've got a, a power switch to uh, you know control things. And so I've got this all wired up right here and uh, I've got it hooked up to my uh, test pattern generator and everything's plugged in. So if I just come over here and hit the switch, I can hear the HV going uh, and I'll go ahead and uh, switch on my test pattern generator. And there you go. Uh, you can see an image coming up on the screen. Uh, like, like I always say, this bar uh, is not present in real life. It's just an artifact of the camera. I should mess with the uh, <laughs> the shutter settings, but uh, so it looks kind of good right now. Um, but if I start stepping through the different patterns, you can see there really isn't any red. And even the sort of uh, reddish color that you see right here does not appear in real life. This is really black. I just think the maybe the, the red color transistor is having issues. But uh, yeah, that's one of the things that I want to address. Um, so let me go ahead and just uh, turn this off uh, for now. And then you can see just the raster lines on the uh, monitor until I come over here and turn off the switch, which kills the power to the monitor. So uh, yeah, like I said, this is just a prototype. It's all kind of wired up just with alligator clips right now. I do have an enclosure up, just a plastic box basically on order that I'll put this all in there and, and you know mount uh, the different uh, components in so I have a nice little convenient box to power up uh, monitors on my test bench. Um, so yeah, what I want to do right now is uh, pull this chassis and then I'm going to start with uh, just a, a cap kit and uh, reflowing uh, some of the, the solder. And hopefully uh, that'll do the trick and I'll be able to do some additional testing uh, from there. Okay, you've kind of seen me do this before. Uh, but in order, in order to work on the monitor, we need to pull the chassis. Uh, but before we do anything, uh, we need to discharge the monitor, right? Uh, the tube, the CRT tube, basically acts as a giant capacitor, and it has the potential of holding on to a large charge uh, uh, even after the machine is turned off. Even it, it could be a long period of time, and there's still a risk that 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 CRT might be charged, and you don't want to take any chances and risk shocking yourself. So uh, it's a good practice just to always discharge the monitor whenever you're going to to work on it. So I've got my little homemade discharging tool. It's just a large screwdriver uh, with a wire connected to the metal part and then soldered on, you know, wrapped around and soldered on, and I've got a bunch of electrical tape sort of insulating it, and I'll hold it down here by the handle part. And the other end of the wire is just an alligator clip, and basically what we're doing is we're shorting uh, the anode, which is the little suction cup uh, thingy uh, on the, uh, the tube itself, we're shorting that uh, to, the ch uh, to the frame of the chassis. So I've got the alligator clip is just clipped onto a metal part of the chassis, uh, I've got my, uh, my left hand, my off hand is behind my back. I don't want to potentially, you know, uh, create a, a bridge or a way for the, the, the voltage to pass through anything other than this line. So I'm just going to come up here gently under the, uh, the sort of suction cup here. 
and just touch the metal uh, to the pins that are underneath here. And uh, I didn't hear a pop or anything, but uh, we should be good. So I'll pull the alligator clip off and then I'm just gonna come underneath here under the piano cup and just disconnect these little kind of like rabbit ear things or like these two little, two little uh, uh, pieces of metal that grab onto the inside. And you know, a lot of people wonder, you know, is this a hole inside of the, the, the tube? And no, it's just a tiny little dimple you know, holds maybe a thimble full of water, doesn't go anywhere. So uh, yeah, that's the first thing we need to disconnect. Uh, and then generally I like to disconnect the, uh, the neck board first and we just gently rock it back and forth uh, and it'll slide off of uh, the neck. There are a bunch of these pins in this plastic connector that hold it there. Uh, and sometimes there's a little bit of uh, hot glue or caulking uh, that you need to break through, uh, which is you know from the factory just to help hold it in place. Uh, we've got a couple things here. This goes to the, uh, the DAG, uh, which is sort of, um, so the DAG is both this uh, sort of wire that goes around uh, the tube, as well as this graphite sort of paint uh, coating. And it's to, to you know, it's a, it's a grounding point. And usually there's a wire that goes to the chassis or the neck board. And often it's soldered, uh, but I've actually replaced it just with a little uh, pin so I can slide it on and off uh, uh, easily. I did this uh, before when I was initially testing it. I might want to put uh, a slightly different connector on there eventually, but that's good for now. Uh, a couple of the things on the K7000. Um, there's a yoke wire over here that we need to disconnect. And there's also the degaussing uh, coil that we need to disconnect. But really what I like to do for those is, uh, you know, you have you know, very little room to operate with the 17-inch uh, the uh, version of this monitor. It's really cramped quarters. So I actually like to disconnect um, or unscrew the, the chassis from the frame to allow me to move things around a little bit, even when it's still connected, uh, so that I can uh, disconnect those wires and not risk banging into anything or damaging it. So let me just get this first screw off, uh, and then the second one here. And that's all, those two screws are really all that's holding uh, the chassis in place. So you can just slide it on out here, but be careful because you are still connected and you don't want to get hung up on anything. And we can move it over to the side a little bit and give us a bit more clearance to come in and disconnect this two pin uh, degaussing uh, uh, circuit, which basically demagnetizes uh, the tube, which, you know, the Earth's magnetic field and other things can sort of make, uh, cause like weird rainbow colors and just screw with the color uh, in the monitor. And then to come in and grab the, uh, yoke wires, which are tangled up here a little bit. I'll give myself a little bit more room so that I can reach in here and gently tug these off. And uh, that's what connects the chassis to the yoke. The yoke you know, is sort of this cone shaped thing that attaches over the, uh, the neck of the CRT. It's got these copper windings on it and these, uh, these rings for adjusting uh, convergence and purity. But yeah, now we've got our uh, 13 inch uh, K7000 um, uh, chassis removed from the board. So yeah, I'm basically gonna be going in here and using a cap kit to replace all of the original electrolytic capacitors, which typically you know wear out over time and, and drift out of spec. I'll check the, uh, the fuse, but that should be fine. Otherwise the monitor wouldn't be working at all. And uh, yeah, I'll take a close look at the flyback and make sure there aren't any cracks on it. And then I'm gonna go over uh, the underside uh, with a fine tooth comb uh, at a minimum, I'm going to reflow the the header pins, which is basically redo the solder connections. I'll do it on the um, uh, the voltage regulator, which is that sort of vertically shaped uh, IC uh, in the back there. And anything else that looks dodgy, uh, will touch up that solder. Uh, and then at that point, I'll do the same thing on the neck board. Um, the neck board has a single uh, capacitor, if you can see it right here. But I'll make sure the neck board all the solder joints look good, and then uh, we'll be ready to plug this back in and test it. So I'll go ahead and do the cap kit on my own. If anything weird pops up, I'll be sure to hop back on camera and show you, but uh, other than that, I'll go uh, knock this out real quick. Okay, and the cap kit is complete. Everything went in perfectly fine, no real issues at all, so that's good. Uh, a couple things I noted, um, one, uh, I think it was C22 uh, was not actually labeled in the silk screen on the solder side uh, of the board, but I got that all figured out. That's fine. No big deal there. 
And uh, yeah, here's all the uh, the old capacitors that I ripped out and replaced uh, with new ones from the ArcadePartsAndRepair.com uh, cap kit. Uh, a couple other things I did: um, uh, reflowed the headers on the uh, the video uh, uh, signal input headers here. Reflowed all those uh, uh, solder connections, and a couple of them looked really, really bad. Definitely very visibly, you know, visible cold solder joints on those uh, 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 input headers. So uh, uh, took care of that. Uh, also, R101 on the chassis, the solder was looking a little bit funky, so I reflowed that and uh, also reflowed the solder for the voltage regulator uh, just for good measure. Uh, one more thing I did was um, I cut the sort of retaining clip uh, on the, the connector for the, uh, the video uh, signal input. Uh, there's like this little like um, uh, lip or th whatever thing that kind of holds on, uh, grabs on to the, uh, uh, the the video connector, the plug, the, the wire input. And, you know, it was really, really tight and had been a pain to sort of disconnect and reconnect it over and over again. And since I'm going to be primarily using this monitor for now uh, in a test setup, you know, to test, you know, uh, PCBs, that sort of thing, I wanted to make it easy to, you know, connect and disconnect. Uh, the video signal, so I just cut that plastic sort of tooth off that that clip uh, that holds onto the uh, the connector there. Uh, another kind of crazy thing I noticed that I've never run into before was uh, the clips for the fuse like were falling apart. Like the the metal was so fatigued. Uh, if you can see it right here, I've got the remnants of it. You know, there's this metal clip that holds the 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 K7000 has a single fuse. And I could see the sort of metal was almost like coming apart. And, right, and when I took it off, it sort of fell apart in my hands, both sides, right? So I don't know if somebody had really been pushing on that uh, fuse to take it out. Uh, fortunately, I did have some replacements already on hand from ArcadePartsAndRepair.com again. And I went ahead and replaced it. I don't think you're going to be able to see it just because it's sort of in the front of the board, you know, kind of right there uh, is where that uh, fuse is mounted. So uh, yeah, I think we are ready to go ahead and test this thing now that we've done that cap kit and that uh, reflow. Uh, I've got everything wired back up with my uh, <laughs> homemade uh, isolation transformer set up here. So uh, I think we're ready to power it up. I'll turn off the main lights in the garage just so that we can see things a little bit better. Uh, I've got the uh, test pattern generator from Crafty Mech uh, plugged in. Let me go ahead and turn that on. And uh, let's hit the switch uh, on the uh, the power or the uh, the isolation transformer setup, and uh, there we go. I can hear the monitor going. Yep, and there we go. There's the image. Look at that. That looks pretty good. I think I need to maybe balance the colors a little bit. Uh, let me actually see if I can get the sync to to sync properly on the camera. Okay, I think I've got it a little bit better. I still am not an expert at. Uh, messing with all these camera settings, but I set, I think the shutter speed at 60 uh, times per second, and that seems to be going good. Although there's, I can see like a little, little bar kind of rolling through. And again, that's just on the camera, not in real life. So I think we're pretty good. We can scroll through the different uh, options here. Yeah, I think we probably have to mess with the, um, maybe the white balance contrast, but look at that. How does that look on the camera? Yeah, see, this is this is darker black in real life. It's still not quite pure black. I need to adjust that a bit. But yeah, look at that great color separation. Um, I am really, really happy with that. You'll probably need to do a little bit of color adjusting, but for the most part, that's a fantastic looking picture right there. If I do say so myself. Yeah, good. Uh, good fade to um, from light to dark. And, uh, yeah, look at that with the different different screens here and then our little falling block. So I say that was successful. And like I said, I do want to adjust the sort of brightness and contrast, white balance sort of stuff here and, and dial in all those colors. But before I do that, before I, I dive into that, which is always a bit of a little uh, trial and error, um, I want to hook up this uh, monitor, this tube rather, uh, to my rejuvenator. Uh, I haven't done that on camera before, and I'm not going to go through a full tutorial. There's great already video tutorials out there from Buffett and Delusionals Arcade. I'll link to those in the video description on exactly how to set up uh, and, and use a rejuvenator. Uh, I don't know if this tube is going to need to actually be rejuvenated, uh, but I at least want to uh, test it. And, the, and a rejuvenator is also great at testing uh, a tube. So 
Let me get uh, everything set up to do just that. All right, we're all set up. Uh, this is my B&K model 467 rejuvenator. Uh, I got it for fairly good price on eBay a couple years ago. And uh, with the help of Mr. Bruce Christian, uh, who is a B&K uh, uh, <laughs> uh, rejuvenator guru, he runs that uh, Facebook group. I'll, I'll put a link to Bruce's group. Uh, and again, in the, in the video description, he was super helpful getting uh, this, uh, helping me to um, rebuild this. So that was, uh, that was great. Really appreciate all that help, Bruce. And, uh, yeah, we've got it, uh, plugged in. Um, basically what you need to do is, you know, look up the instructions for the particular tube, uh, that you're hooking up to your rejuvenator. And if you were lucky enough to have the original, uh, guide or book or manual that came with this thing, you might, your tube might be in that book and sort of have the settings for what you need to do. Um, but if you don't have that, or if you want, you know, sort of a more complete picture, uh, there is a website called uh, tubular.atomize.org. Uh, I believe it's it's um, run by Ian from the Coin Rejects podcast, which you should uh, definitely check out if you haven't already. Um, it's a sort of a treasure trove of data about old CRTs, about old tubes. It has all the info you need for tube swaps and all kinds of stuff, and for uh, setting up different kinds of, of rejuvenators. There are different models. You know, ones are made, you know, popular, the most popular ones are made by B&K and uh, Sencor. And basically what you do is you look up the number on your tube, uh, right? And our tube is an A34JLL00X25. You type that into uh, tubular and you get something like this uh, and this is the a34jll00x series color picture tube you have all the information about you know the the basic features the pin out of the neck all that sort of thing and what we what we want to look at is down here the rejuvenator setup for being k467 we want to use adapter cr31 set our filament or heater voltage to 6.3 and set our g1 to 50 uh, so that's exactly what we're going to do so basically, uh, you know, this obviously plugs into the wall and then there is, uh, you know, wiring that connects to the, the pins coming out of the, the neck of the tube. But, um, you know, every, not every tube, but lots of tubes are very, very different. And there's all kinds of different uh, pinouts and whatever. And if you're like me, you've got a big old bag of, of all these uh, different adapters for different types of tubes. Um, you know, CR31 is a common one for arcade monitors. So is CR23. And uh, so I've got my CR31 uh, adapter plugged into the, uh, the cord here, uh, and then that's plugged into the tube. So we're ready to go to get started. I do have the thing, uh, the, the, uh, the, the rejuvenator plugged into the wall, so we're ready to go into setup. And you got this knob down here that starts on off, and we can go to setup here. And the first thing we need, we see the power is on. The first thing we need to do is uh, set our heater voltage, right? And so we want, like it says here, 6.3. So we have our heater range uh, set to four to seven and 6.3 is within that range. And then we can come in here and set our heater voltage and turn it up to 6.3. And sorry if I'm getting my head or shadow in the way. So that's all the way up there. So that's good. Uh, and we wanna set our G1 to 50 and that's right about there and it's just these sort of needle dials here and uh we're ready to go Oop, and that just the heater voltage just moved uh, maybe i've got some bugs to work out with the uh, uh <laughs> with the rebuilt rejuvenator but uh all right 6.3 for the heater voltage and 50 for the uh the g1 right there so now we can go to set cutoff, and if and basically what you're doing is sort of, um, you know, prepping each uh, gun, right? And so the way a CRT works is it has individual electron guns for the red, the, the green, and the blue. And uh, if you read the instructions, it says to set the needle, turn the dial until it's at the first division. And really, what that means is the first uh, tick on the chart. All right, and. Right about there is good. We'll move this one to the first division. And the farther you go, the, that's sort of your early sign that that color is a bit weak, but we're getting good adjustment ranges so far here. 
All right. And blue isn't moving at all. Hmm. I don't know if that's a rejuvenator thing or what. So, uh, huh. Well, okay. Not sure what to make of that. Because uh, obviously we had blue on the uh, on the monitor. That might actually just be a rejuvenator thing. So uh, next thing we do is set it to test. And uh, we've got our red and green uh, needles uh, uh, in the green uh, range, which is good, but blue's not moving at all. And uh, I don't know what to make about that. Uh, give me a second to figure something out and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. And through the magic of television, or should I say the magic of YouTube, I've actually got a second backup BNK Model 467 <laughs> rejuvenator. And uh, yeah, so the story behind this was, uh, I had bought that first one not working, and you know, and the, while I was fixing it, I found this working one for even cheaper <laughs> on YouTube, so I couldn't pass that up. Uh, I mean, on, on eBay, not YouTube. So we've got it all set up exactly the way it was before. Uh, it's plugged into uh, adapter, neck adapter, uh, CR31. I've got my heater voltage set to 6.3. I've got my G1 voltage set to 50. Uh, I've set my cutoffs, and so each, all three of the, the red, the green, and the blue are all at the first division, the first tick on the uh, on the uh, uh, the associated gauges. So I'm ready to go to test. So if I just turn this knob here, and we see all three needles move uh, into the green. They're at the, the lower end of green, um, and so I'm probably not going to do a, a full rejuvenation or a restoration because... That can be a bit um, taxing on the monitor, excuse me, on the tube, and you do risk, um, you know, you can only do that so many times. So you don't want to do it if you don't have to. And, you know, if we weren't in the green, yeah, you know, we are kind of in the lower end of the green. If we weren't in the green, then maybe I would be looking at doing uh, a rejuvenate, but we're not going to do that. But what's nice about the 467 is you don't have to do a full rejuvenation. You can do what's called a clean and balance, right, which is sort of a, a kinder, gentler Kind, gentlier, kinder, gentler version of um, uh, uh, of a re, of a rejuvenation of a restoration. So to do that, we just uh, turn to the restore tab, and uh, what I'm going to do is for each of the guns, I'm going to hold down the uh, the button, um, and uh, it'll jump up into the green and then fall down, and as soon as it hits the red, I'm gonna let go, right? And I don't know if you can really kind of see the needle, but uh, we'll kind of do this together. So I'm gonna hold this down, it'll jump to the green, and then it'll slowly fall back into the red, and as soon as it does, I will let go. So pressing down, and it's in the uh, yellow, falling, not really falling anymore, but that's fine, I'll let it go there. And sometimes you'll see kind of like sparkly stuff happening in the neck. So let me actually turn the lights off, uh, just to make that a little bit easier in case we are able to uh, see it. And the problem with that, though, is I'm not going to be able to see uh, the gauge. So let me see if I can do this and kind of illuminate it just enough for me to see what's going on on my end. Um, you can't even really see the, the neck glow that's going on. Let me reposition uh, the tripod here just to give you a chance, a chance at seeing the uh, the light show going on inside this thing. Um, and so right here in the middle uh, is, you'll, you'll see a little bit of the neck glow right there. Let me see if I can kind of zoom in on that. And then I'm gonna come over here and do the clean and balance on the green gun. So let me go ahead and do that, three, two, one. All right, we're in the yellow and falling. Are you seeing a light show at all? I don't know, because I'm paying attention over here. It's not really going into the red. Uh, it's really just staying in the in the yellow, which is fine, I guess. Uh, so let me do this on the blue one. Let's see if we see a light show. Not really. So I guess this tube is kind of okay. Uh, you'll often see a light show as um, things kind of uh, burn off of the tubes. So let's turn the lights back on. And now that we've done that clean and balance, we can run our test again. And hopefully, you know, maybe these guns are a little bit 
more into the green zone on the gauge. So, whoops, coming back over here. Let's take a good look down at the gauges. Let's see what we're talking about. All right. And uh, let's see, I'm actually going to come back to setup and we will um, adjust the, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, let's come back here. I wanted to go to set cutoff because the, uh, the sort of how far you need to go to get to that first division will change. So we're going to reset the cutoffs. And here we go. There's the green one and blue. It's nice that all three of these needles are moving. All right, so that's back. And now if we go to test, see, I think that's a, a decent improvement, right? I don't really want to tax this tube more than I need to by doing a real uh, rejuvenation. You know, we're solidly into the uh, the green on all three needles, right? We're um, sort of on the G here, on the beginning of the first O here, and on the middle of the first O here. So I think that's uh, pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, disconnect the rejuvenator. We'll hook everything back up. I'll dial in the colors and we'll take uh, one last look uh, at, the, uh, at the monitor before wrapping up this video. All right, how does that look? Wow. <laughs> I'd say that's a really nice image that we've got there. The whites look great, the colors look great, color separation, man. So I, I hooked everything back up, obviously, uh, turned it back on, went through the white balance procedure uh, as described in the K7000 manual from Wells Gardner. And uh, I think we've got a real, real nice image here uh, on this monitor. It looks even nicer in person. Um, you know, the camera always distorts things a little bit on a monitor and uh, yeah, we can just hop through uh, the different pages or screens of the TPG. Awesome tool, Crafty Mix TPG. Nice grayscale, pure colors here, nice white. And there's our lovely falling blocks uh, screen. So uh, I'd call this a success, uh, despite the little hiccup with <laughs> one of my uh, rejuvenators that perhaps uh, I need to spend a little bit more time with uh, to get that blue dial uh, working correctly. But we powered through it, <laughs> used my backup rejuvenator, and uh, I'd say we're good to go. Um, so I'll go ahead and uh, I'll clean off actually uh, a spot on the chassis or on the frame, and I'll pop on my little label here says this chassis was recapped and, you know, repaired by yours truly in June of 2023. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that'll do it for this video. So let's kind of re recap what we did. No pun intended. Uh, I built this little temporary isolation transformer, uh, power supply setup uh, for a test bench for a monitor, hooked it all up. I uh, saw that it was working. I'm going to refine things a little bit. Uh, you know, I'll show you in a future video sort of what I end up doing as the, the final version. Uh, but we got that set up. Uh, we recapped this 13 inch K7000 monitor. Uh, we also did some, we re reflowed some of, uh, some of the solder joints and brought that back to life. Uh, and then we hooked it up to a rejuvenator uh, and just did a little clean and balance uh, to make sure we got, uh, you know, uh, uh, good responses from the RGB guns. And uh, then off camera, I just dialed it in. And you've seen me futz around um, and do the white balance, color balance on a monitor before. So yeah, uh, this will be great to use in the future to uh, test various uh, PCBs and things like that. So uh, cool, another great uh, tool to have in the, uh, the holster, uh, as it were. So yeah, uh, <laughs> thanks for watching. I always appreciate all the comments, feedback, everything. Uh, if you would have done things differently or if you had some sort of suggestion or question about what I did, please, please, please leave me a comment down below or wherever you happen to find this video or find me on the internet. I truly, truly, deeply appreciate uh, all the subscriptions and, and everything. It's, it's so amazing. I'm just completely blown away that there's so many people that like these videos. 
And uh, yeah, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Um, also, consider becoming a member, a YouTube channel member. You know, for a couple bucks a month, uh, you support the channel. Uh, you get access to some perks like monthly members only live stream, a members only Discord, early access to all the videos as soon as I upload them before the scheduled release time. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's a great way to support the channel and uh, every little bit helps uh, for me to take care of uh, all the monstrosities, all the, the projects in the restoration queue. So anyway, I got an early morning tomorrow, so I'm gonna wrap it up here. Uh, <laughs> as always, I'm Charlie. Thanks for watching Overtime Arcade and I'll see you next time. Oh, 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 overtime! <laughs>